What a beautiful song to take us into meditation. Often I think of meditation as a time to ponder and reflect and let myself feel the one presence that we talk about so much. And that to me is an amazing grace to be able to feel the one presence, to feel the circle of supportive energy that surrounds us. We are swimming and moving and breathing in this beautiful, creative life energy. It's all around us, within us, so we pause to feel and sense and to be informed by and transformed by this energy that we call God, Holy Spirit, One Presence, Universal Mind, the Atman, so many names of this energy that we want to give ourselves over to often enough that when the world shakes us, and it will, that we have the skill, the ability, the practice to deepen into this place of quietude, of stillness, of listening, of receiving, a place where we can know our divinity without resistance. Listen to these words. Charles Fillmore defined zeal as the propelling force that takes us into powerful and purposeful living. Zeal is an attitude of forwardness and courageousness. Zeal is a devotion to one's purpose. Zeal is the energy of forward movement for humankind. Zeal is the inner flame of the soul. So I invite us all to take a few deep breaths. We allow our hearts and minds to open to this divine idea that zeal and purpose lives within us, is innately a part of us, and it is that forward-moving urge of humankind. Keep opening, developing, evolving, And so now, as we take a few more deep breaths, we go into a time of silence, and simply we are invited to ponder this inner flame within us. It enlivens and animates us and moves us forward as we give ourselves over to this inner enlivening give ourselves over to this inner flame and this awareness that we are being breathed through, that we are being enlivened by this one presence. And we hold all of our loved ones and all world events and issues and circumstances in this place of awareness that we have the inner flame that takes us forward 
into knowing what to do, how to be, what is ours to do in this world where all of us are called to be the light and do what we can to be a transformative presence, a healing presence, a forgiving presence. We give thanks for remembering this and knowing this. And for those of us who can, we give thanks for giving ourselves over to the practice, surrendering to the practice of knowing ourselves as divine, knowing ourselves as a part of the healing presence. And so we pray in the name and the light of this one presence that lives within us all, and we say, so it is, and so we let it be. <coughs> Namaste. Good morning to you. Remember that some others, we're all in our places with some shiny faces. Oh, this is the way to start a new day. Thank you. <laughs> Class. And I've also been at nursing homes where we sang it to start an activity. It's a good way to start the day, right? And I start everything that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to talk about zeal this morning. And <coughs> I just can't think what you said about it. <laughs> so what is zeal? It's an interesting word. Zeal. Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Everybody goes enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Zeal. Zeal. Four-letter word. Four-letter word. A great scrabble word, by the way. <laughs> Zeal is something we have all felt, and we've also been acutely aware of when we're not feeling it. Right? Yeah, and there's there are moments when we have to as we might say, conjure up some zeal, because you know it's going to be important. And I, I've told you this story before about that conference I went to about, um, uh, it was called Spirituality and Healing in Medicine years ago in LA. It was put on by Harvard. And in this conference of very learned people, I mean, I had one of the lowest degrees there at the time, um, they were determining how to teach medical students compassion. So if that's not available to you ordinarily, how do you teach someone compassion? So after three days of a conference, the idea came forward, let's give them acting lessons. Smart. Because You've probably seized on this too. When we act as if, often we bring forth <coughs> the actual genuine emotion of happiness or empathy. Sometimes we have to give ourselves over to letting ourselves feel. What would that feel like to feel compassion or forgiveness in this moment? What would it feel like for me to feel oneness with some of the folks in the world with whom I'm having a hard time right now. So I give myself over to this feeling of oneness, and before I know it, it's actually genuinely happening in me. So one of the medical doctors that we knew in Santa Barbara, he decided to test out this idea of compassion, and he went into a room of one of his patients at Cottage Hospital, and he was very filled with enthusiasm and zeal Mrs. Smith, how are you doing today? I'm so glad to see you. Let's open these curtains. Let's get some sunshine in here. I want to see your beautiful face. And the next thing I heard was, have you been drinking? <laughs> <laughs> so we want, we want to be <laughs> genuine enough. So the idea is to give ourselves over to feeling the zeal or the enthusiasm, even in those moments. And believe me, when I was thinking about this talk this past week, with some of the disturbing events in our community this past week, 
how in the world do I talk about zeal and enthusiasm when there are many, so many hard things happening? So here's how I'm going to do this. I am going to look at the deeper meaning of zeal. And you know it comes from the 12 powers. Bill Moore, our co-founder, talked about the 12 powers, the innate abilities that are in us, encoded within us, that stretch back all the way through infinity. In other words, these skills, powers, these qualities <coughs> are built within us already. So it's not a matter of getting them, it's a matter of uncovering them, revealing them. So it's the individual revelation of the power of spirit that's within us, and we get to unveil these ideas. So, Charles Fillmore said, zeal is the intensity, the ardor, the enthusiasm, it's the inward fire of the soul that urges humankind onward. Regardless of the intellectual mind of caution. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> so this zeal is something that I find especially interesting to talk about at this day and hour, and especially in New Thought, because New Thought teaches that we have the power to affect the world that we see by the way we're feeling inside, and that is an audacious idea, but not new. Jesus said, as a man thinks in his heart, that's the way he's going to be. David Miller says it is what it is. Well, it is what it is appears the way it does because of what we are feeling inside. So that's basically the thought. But I thought that this is not easy to talk about zeal when some of our hearts could be breaking <coughs> at personal events or world events. So I want to invoke one presence and open heart and mind the way Fillmore did, and I put it up on the screen. This was his invocation, and actually Myrtle's also. Every class they did. Let's read it together. I am now in the presence of pure being, immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. I acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed Spirit, and thy divine wisdom now erase my mortal limitations, and from thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation my world according to thy perfect law. Whoa, that's a lot. That's what they, every time they did a class or work, this is how they invoked presence. The one particular piece I want to bring out here just for this morning. I am immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. That's what we mean when we say, you know, we live, move, and have our, our being. We're swimming in this energetic soup, this life-giving soup, and we get to decide how we're going to use the energy. And zeal can go either way. The word zealot is usually applied these days to terrorists. So it can go either way. I can have zeal and I can get a lot done for the good of my life and for humankind and I can uplift life. Or I can strap a bomb to my body and walk in to a store and detonate it. I can be a zealot for life or I can be a zealot for tearing down life. So you see, it's tricky. So what kind of zeal? How do we tap into zeal in a way that it's going to be a part of the evolving world? <coughs> so he says enthusiasm is the impulse to go forward, and it's the urge behind all things. It's the life that wants to keep moving forward. And if you look at pictures of our galaxy, the universe, as you see, they go in a spiral, don't they? They're all, we're always moving. We don't feel it, but we are moving right now, our planet, around the sun, and our galaxy is moving, and we're part of universes unseen yet. We are part of a multiverse, and there's constant, constant, constant movement, just like the blood in our bodies. Constant movement. And yet, we will dig in to an idea or belief, and we'll say, 
I ain't moving from here. By golly, this is the way we've always done it, and this is the way we're always going to do it, and I'm not leaving this pole. And yet, life is continually moving, and so zeal is continually moving in us, moving us forward. And sometimes, I know, let's all just go ahead and say it out loud, sometimes it looks like our species is moving back. <laughs> but in the overall big picture, and my perspective, and I've had to do some practice to get there and see it, yes, we're moving forward. But like somebody in here says, it's a dance. Sometimes we take a few steps back, a few steps forward. Sometimes we're going in circles but we're moving forward, and I really do see this. So, here's a fellow who knew about the moving forward of humankind, the evolving consciousness of humankind, who dedicated his life to the evolving of humankind. So, Roy Jean Davis left his body last week, and he was a part of expanding the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda in the West. He was the last living teaching disciple of Yogananda. So here's what Roy Eugene Davis said about this topic we're on today. It is on the inward condition that the outer reality depends. It's on the inward condition that the outward reality depends. Live with inspired purpose and empowering enthusiasm. You are an immortal spiritual being. Live as you are meant to live. So I can see you right now. You are an immortal spiritual being. <laughs> live the way you're supposed to be living. So let's just take a deep breath on that. I am an immortal spiritual being. Can we say it together? I, I am an immortal spiritual being. being. So we might want to ponder that as an immortal spiritual being, we have access to depths and reservoirs of wisdom. We didn't just get here. We didn't just arrive in the world. We, as a species, have been rolling intelligence forward for a long time. There are depths of wisdom that we have not yet fully tapped into. And this presence, this energy, is moving us forward into that. So when we talk about zeal, it's not just the, oh, I'm so happy, happy day, oh, I love that song, oh, happy day. I love what I feel when I sing that song. But I don't always feel the zeal of that song. I don't wake up every morning going, oh, happy day. <laughs> You know, I don't wake up every morning saying, God, what are you up to today? I'd love to be a part of it. I don't wake up every morning like that. So I have to remember that zeal is also the awareness that for as long as I'm here, I want to tap into my life purpose and move forward with that until it's time for me, like Roy Jean Davis, to exit the body. I want to stay plugged into what is my life purpose for as long as I'm here? I mean, that just makes good sense to me. So I don't have to wake up all happy, but I can wake up being aware of my divine purpose and surrendering to that moving forward in me in the world in this moment. You see how that works? So we don't have to say, oh, I'm not feeling zeal today. But can we at least give ourselves over to feeling this forward movement energy in us? Can we give ourselves over to that? Yes. 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 And it requires that we keep checking back in with what is my purpose today? It might simply be giving a smile like Roy's given, his famous smile. It might simply be saying a word of encouragement. It might be writing a letter of love and compassion to someone that you weren't able to forgive for a long, long time. 
might be making that phone call he's been meaning to make for 34 years. <laughs> <laughs> to let somebody off the hook for what they did or didn't do. You see what I'm It can be the small, huge things. Right? Fillmore said, I fairly sizzle, sizzle with zeal. Say that, I fairly sizzle with zeal. <laughs> And enthusiasm and spring forth of a mighty faith to do the things that ought to be done by me. Is that how you wake up every morning? Oh, <laughs> he was 92 when he wrote this. He was 92. Come on. I fairly sizzle. I mean, he could have said, oh, I'm filled with enthusiasm. No, he had to say, I am fairly sizzle. At 92. At 92. And now, you know, like Phil Pearson, 92. I thought you were going to tell me he passed on. He said, he died, moved to Reno. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you know, uh, Phil Pearson, I don't know if you, he's one of the big names in Unities. His wife knew Fillmore. Dorothy's now passed. They've, around the, they've been a part of the movement for years. He did something audacious years ago. He broke ranks, and instead of building a church building, he bought a, uh, was it a bowling alley or a grocery store? Bowling alley. And he converted it, they converted it, he and his community, to a unity church. They had all the parking they needed, all the space they needed. Uh, it's one of the bigger churches that we spoke in back in the day. And people said, well, you you can't do that. You can't have a church in a shopping center. That would be odd and peculiar. And Phil Pearson, who was a real estate guy, said, well, I don't know. I'm going to push forward into this idea because it makes sense to me. And he did it. <coughs> and the rest is history. They have a very successful church for many years. What is it that people tell us we cannot do or that we're not equipped to do? There's going to be so many messages in our own thinking, even about the center that we're doing. Well, who do we think we are? Who do we think we are? <coughs> Guided by a purpose that goes beyond even what we know and all the ways it's going to be fulfilled. <coughs> this is zeal. It moves us forward. So, Marianne Williamson. Who knows who Marianne Williamson is? Return to Love and so many other books. The Healing of America. Returning to the soul of America. She's running for president. But you know, here's the point. There's a lot of people running for president. <laughs> to, keep, to put into the conversation of our country and our government, to put into the conversation the things that speak to our goodness and our kindness and our concern for one another. And that's her message. So as as far as she gets with that message, you know, we hold her in light and blessing because she's putting into the conversation important things that need to be there. She said, it is not the transformation of your circumstances, but of our self-perception. From identifying with the limited bodies to our infinite spirits. That frees the world around us to sparkle with infinite possibilities. Now, I don't know about you, but that right there is an audacious spiritual practice to keep tuning in to the infinite possibilities that are sparkling all around us all the time, even when we still have the blinders on. Amen. And I'm doing 2 a.m., 3 a.m. practice with this now nonstop. Because I can think of lots of limiting ideas. I know y'all don't do that, but I can think of lots of limiting ideas. So I have to open my heart and mind to expand the field to be aware there are sparkling possibilities that exist. I just don't know what they are yet. I don't know what they are yet. But I know the sparkling possibilities exist. So what do we do when we don't know what to do? What? Pray and meditate. Pray, meditate, pause, breathe, ponder, and wait. Wait for it. Wait for it. 
Wait for it. Wait for it. And then spirit says, now, move. But there has to be an audacious surrender to this idea that there are sparkling possibilities all around us that we may or may not see. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I just want to say, if, if we can't see the evolution that has come to this point with this woman, beautiful woman, spiritual woman, that's running for president, than this country. Yes. We had a yes. black president. Wow. wow. We have a spiritual person running. Right. We have one in, in right now that's showing you the other side of everything. Oh, yes. there you go. <laughs> church was unity. <laughs> it got a little confusing for a while, but the imam came up here one day. I met him at the door. The doorbell rang. I was here by myself, and he came in and said, I'd love to visit with you, and we did. He took his shoes off at the front door, he, and I said, you don't, you don't have to do that here, and he looked at me like, well, this is holy ground, is it not? Oh, yes. <laughs> and we walked up here and we visited for a few hours uh, he had a zeal not a zealot for harm but a zeal for good I remember thinking and actually telling him you are being put into that category you are aware of those people he said oh yes I am said, how do, you, how do you respond to that? He said, what I'm doing right now, I visit one-on-one -on -one with the people who I feel I'm being guided to be with so that they won't be afraid of me or my faith. How simple is that? Visiting one-on-one, -on -one, planting seeds, or inviting you know, to, be, to become known to one another, I remember him saying, we are going to have a hard road ahead of us. And I reflect on groups of people who have had hard roads to walk on and being accepted, you know, and, and, I, and I watch the people who've been cut away and harmed in many, many ways, and often they become the zealots for harm. You know, it's like Bob Simon sings a song, Hurt People, Hurt People and healed people, heal people. So we always want to strive for our healing and our deepening. We have an AA group who meets here. And they're known as the Free Thinkers AA. They rent space from us on Tuesdays. So some of you will never see them. They're here on Tuesday afternoon. And when they came to us to rent space, they said, we're a little odd and peculiar. We don't fit in with the normal 12-step AA group. So we are odd and peculiar because we identify ourselves as atheists. And I said, well, what does that mean? So we don't believe in God. And in AA, you have to say you, you, know, you surrender to the higher power. So we don't believe in God. I said, well, tell me about the God you don't believe in, and you know how that goes. Uh, we don't believe in the white guy in the sky, you know, giving out reward and punishment. I said, great, well, I don't believe in that God either. Uh, we believe in an energy of kindness and goodness and compassion and the, the golden rule that we do unto others as we, you know, we want to be treated fairly and respectfully, that's what we're going to do, and what we cast out into the world returns to us in many ways, so we want to honor and celebrate the goodness 
the original goodness in us. And someone called me last week and said, I went to your AA group, by the way. <laughs> they're really weird. I said, well, you know, they're an odd, they're even odd to AA. They're called free thinkers AA, and they're not the regular AA. Yeah, well, I, I can't believe you let those people into your church. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, tell me about those people. <laughs> well, you know, they don't believe in God. I said, yes, that's what they profess, but I, I suspect that they sense an energy, a creative energy. I suspect that they see that goodness is possible in the world, and I suspect that they want to experience sobriety, and they're together to encourage one another in that. And they rent space from us. They're not spokespeople for unity necessarily, but we welcome there. We welcome them here. I said, what better place for an atheist to be than a unity church? <laughs> and the person said, yeah, but those people will give your church a bad name. I said, I, already have one. I said, <laughs> <laughs> church is full of those people. Yeah. We're all those people. Someone will find something, I'm sure, every day to say about me or unity or, you know, we're, we've all fit into that category, those people, right? My ancestors, the Irish, the Native Americans, they were those people at one time, still are, in many ways. Those people. Yeah, those people is us. Those people are us. And I really, I felt myself rising into my zeal, and I could have caused harm with that. I could have caused harm in the delivery of my message. But I chose to ha tap into the, the zeal, the Holy Spirit energy, that's what it, feels like to me, rather than the self-righteousness that I had a, a right to set them right. I did it in a good way, right? I did it in a good way. Right, honey? Um, yeah. <laughs> I did it in a good way. And I invited this person to come to Unity and see what we're about. I said, because we have learned that those people are part of the whole collective. And we've all at some point been those people in somebody's mind, right? So let's take a deep breath. We give ourselves over to this idea of zeal being a forward movement flame, an urge of consciousness that moves us forward as a species. And that when we feel it going over into the edge of being a zealot that might create harm, we want to pull ourselves back to balance and center. Because it's easier than we think to get pulled over the edge into the harmful development. I want to stay in the balance. So. We take a deep breath into that to be filled with that sizzling zeal that Charles Fillmore talked about. To be excited that our life purpose has us being a part of creating a presence of healing and helpfulness and kindness and healing sound in the world. Our presence becomes that. And we say, so it is and so we let it be. Namaste. Did he come? The what? Did he come to the service? Today, no. But I won't be surprised if he comes at some point. <laughs> Not, not He'll want to see who those people are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Margaret, for reminding us about the fire of our soul, the zeal that manifests the divine. Thank you.